All right, we've got our top casting uh, for the head now cleaned up fully and ready for uh, the final sort of wipe down and reassembly now. So how I've done that, so I started off with a, a standing knife with the blade laid flat on the surfaces and just running along to get rid of the, the silicon that was sort of above the surface level. I followed that on with, um, once I got rid of all of that, I then followed that up with um, a countersink in my DeWalt drill and I've put countersinks on all these holes that, that were just sharp. Um, I then removed the circlips, the remaining circlips that were in here and also there's some sort of rubber caps that sit on top of some of the shaft bearings so we knock those out and where the motor sits there is a, a dust cover where the shaft goes up to the motor so we took that out as well. So we've taken everything out, we've taken the filling plug out where you fill with oil so that the, the thing's completely empty of, of any sort of loose parts. Um, I then followed up the after the countersink uh, just with a file and just running that almost in a draw file fashion wherever I could over this surface just to remove any secondary burrs created from the countersink and any lumps and bumps that were um, on there. I then with the file went round some of the edges where there were some nasties sort of hanging hanging over sort of burrs from the casting process. Um, the trick there is to do minimal damage to this paintwork to try and keep the casting as sealed as possible so it's been quite a light touch with the file to be honest just to get rid of the worst worst bits to make sure there's nothing loose. I then followed up with some scotch bright basically just on this sealing surface just to give it a final rub over to make sure there was no silicon or sealant left on there. I then followed up with an oil stone laid flat on there and just gave it a final quick stone um, over just to make sure there was no final burrs on there and then I've used um, scotch bright again in all of these bores to remove the paint that was in there there's quite a lot in these center, center two um, so we've got all the paint out and then I've used I've got a set of dental tools stainless steel dental tools these are really good really really useful things to have in a workshop and I've basically used those to go around and pick out all of the crap that's in the circlip grooves basically so I've cleaned all the circlip grooves out and then finally last thing was to go through uh, with sorry the next thing I did was uh, paintbrush and WD-40 and just gave all of this a, a good clean out on the casting on the rough cast surfaces and a wipe out um, and then the final thing was I went through all of the holes with a with a rag and just made sure there was no loose bits of muck in the in the holes. So that's now ready for reassembly. Um, my bearings have arrived, um, so I'm now planning the rebuild strategy. Um, and there's several ways I can do this. Um, so for those that don't know, and apologies if you do, um, fast forward this bit. But for anybody who doesn't, when you're fitting any bearing like this you've got to be really really careful so if, you, if I was fitting this bearing to a shaft through the central bore the pressure should only ever be exerted on that on the race that you're fitting to so if you're fitting on a shaft you put your pressure on the internal race if you're fitting into a, a bore you put your pressure on the external race that way you're not transferring the force through the bearing itself and potentially doing damage in the bearing that's the textbook way of fitting them. Unfortunately, that's not always possible um, to do that, and and that's going to be the case when I do this, um, just because of the complexity of what I'm fitting and where I'm fitting it to. So, some of the bearings I can fit, like the one I've just shown you, they're okay. Um, I can fit some up front to the lower casting on the mill and this upper casting some of the bearings are mainly on the two gear shafts in the middle um, the fit on the shafts is far far tighter than the fit in these bores so what I'm planning on doing is where I've got tight fits on the shafts I'm going to fit the bearings to the shafts up front and I'm going to do that in the vice in a controlled manner pressing on the right part of the bearing um, and then I shall fit the shafts to the mill uh, base casting um, 
at which point I shall be able to see them through these holes as I put the top on and I'll be able to line them up and make sure everything's lined up and then we'll finally press the top on and press the top of the bearings into these registers in the top and that's that's probably the the least stressful way certainly for the bearings at least of, of refitting everything so rightly or wrongly that's the way I'm going to do it um, so I've got everything else we'll call it a primary clean done on everything um, and everything will get a secondary final wipe over just before reassembly just to make sure there's no nasties going back in there um, so we're about ready to start the rebuild process I'll film bits of it as we go um, where I think there's something that's worth watching I'll film it where I think there's something like this that I can describe in a couple of minutes rather than filming 20 minutes of video doing it um, I'll do it that way around just to give you um, you know just to make the videos a bit shorter so I'll get on with now laying everything back out on the bench that's been cleaned ready to go and then we can start the reassembly process in the reverse order that we uh, that we sort of disassembled it well, I've had a bit of a tidy up only a little bit of a tidy up um, so I've got everything laid back out on the bench again now on clean paper towel um, that's been cleaned up and you'll see there these are the bearings that have turned up so they're all SKF so decent you know, decent quality bearings um, I'm now going to start in reverse order so I'm, the first thing I'm going to start with is uh, the quill itself and I'm going to fit the two outer races top and bottom um, to the quill and we'll do that in the vise um, and we'll see how we get on so I've got my um, quill sat up right in the vise um, I've got the bottom end of the quill just bear with me I'll show you that that's sat flush up against the vise so that there's something you know it's 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 not going to be slipping and sliding in the vice it's got a solid uh, base and I've just put some paper in there just to stop any uh, any damage or anything occurring to that bottom face or any muck getting in so um, we're ready now so I've got my I say got the quill in with my uh, rather unconventional paint job now finished inside so that's all nicely sealed in there um, so I'm not going to get any any muck coming down now from um, from that unfinished bore that was in there I'm just going to give this a final a final wipe over and just make sure that that bore is absolutely spotless before we put this bearing in and I've started with the most contentious bearings because um, when you get into talking about preloading spindles and taper roller bearings uh, I've done a bit of research and it seems like quite an emotive subject um, everybody's got an opinion um, so you know when it comes to preload I've done quite a bit of research and I've looked and looked and looked and I'm struggling to find there's nothing in my manual there's nothing in manuals for uh, similar to machines you know, these are all built in the same factory pretty much in China and then rebranded so I've been searching on you know, Grizzly, Bolton Tools, there's, there's a whole load of them that, do, that make these that rebrand them, Warco and there is no information anywhere on how to preload these bearings I've been onto SKF's website and had a look for information that they might have and there's lots and lots of information about preloading bearings if you're a boffin um, I, I, you know it's all understandable and it all makes sense but for me to make sense of it all I need to know far more about the mill than I already know uh, and I don't have information available to pump into the calculation so it's just you know it's not going to make any sense so one thing I was pleased about I'm just going to add a tiny I've cleaned this this is straight out of the bag out of the box I'm just going to add the thinnest layer of oil just 
just around that outside um, surface. That wasn't that wasn't very thin at all. Oh well, I'll just give that a bit of a wipe. A bit too much on there. I just want to make sure that this doesn't corrode itself in at some point. Just give that a quick wipe over. Uh, it's got a, a nice thin coat of oil on there now. So yeah, it, it did mention on the SKF website about the empirical method of uh, of preload, which I was really pleased to read because that's the method I'm going to use, which basically means tighten it up a little bit, try it. If it's a bit loose, tighten it up a bit more. If it's a bit tight, loosen it a bit. And that's kind of the method that I'm going to use. Right, let's see how this goes. So I've got a bit of brass and I'm just going to gently tap this as evenly as I can. Because the only way, if I get this wrong, the only way this is coming out is the same way the last one did, which is uh, pretty much its doom and demise, and I'd need to buy another one. It seems to be going fairly well. I was thinking about, and it doesn't look like I need to, I was thinking about wrapping these outer shells, these outer races up in a in a freezer bag, chucking them in the freezer overnight, and then when I actually came to this assembly part, just using my blowtorch, not to get this hot, but just to put a little bit of heat in, probably to take it up to 40, 50 degrees C, something like that. So then I'd have the shell at minus 18, and the, the you know the, the spindle at plus 50 and that would have just created a few tenths of clearance for fitting but I thought I'd just give it a try first and see how easily these are going to go and up to now they're going in fairly well so I don't think that would have been necessary Well, if the rest of the rebuild goes that well, John's going to be a happy man. That was, uh, that's gone in really, really easily, really well. And it's a, it's a good fit in there as well, you know. Um, so, happy with that. I'll um, flip this over, do the one the other end. There's no point filming that, it's the same thing. Um, and then I'll bring you back when we're putting the inner race onto the shaft. Okay we're coming on to the inner race now on the sort of spindle part itself. Um, it's had a final clean up, final wipe. <clears throat> I've got a fresh piece of paper here that's got no contamination on it and I'm just going to put two or three drops of oil on that and I'm just going to give that a white round and the reason I'm using paper rather than my fingers is because my fingers are I've got muck on them, various bits of rust and whatnot. so that's a final white round with that with a very very light coating of oil I've got it sat on a block in the vise so it's solid down 
I've got the race sat here on a clean bit of paper it's been wiped up and this is where it can go completely wrong or right so I'm going to check this three or four times before I put it on to make sure I get it on the right way round because that would be uh, catastrophic if I got it the wrong way so it's going in the spindle that way I'm just looking at my spindle which means it's going on that way just drop that down there this is going to be interesting because the race is the actual race that holds the rollers is uh, higher up than the sorry the cage that holds the rollers is higher up than the inner race so I'm not going to be able to use a drift like that to knock that on I could no, I don't want to do that. I'll uh, I'll cut the camera and I'll come back once I've uh, once I've made something to uh, so that I can get to that inner race to to knock that on. I'll bring you back in a few moments. So we're back, guys. Twenty minutes later, and I think I've found the perfect thing. What I've done is destroyed the old bearing and so I've taken the cage off and all the taper rollers out and I've slotted it all the way through so that it's got a bit of spring in it and hopefully that will now sit face to face with that inner part of the race and I can now use my drift on the top of there and not that bearing on well that's the plan anyway Let's see what happens. Get some clean paper. There we go. No damage to the cage. Perfect. So I'm happy with that. That's um, that might even be a tip for somebody. I didn't really know whether that was going to work, if I'm honest. But uh, I would far rather do that than try and fit that the same way as I took the old one apart, which is what I bet a lot of people in the factories have done, where they just drop the bearing on, put it into the spindle, and then just tighten it all up and try and crush it in because doing that you just put all the load right through the bearing but doing it that way there's been no load on that bearing at all on the on the actual bearing surfaces or the rollers um, so I'm happy with that that's uh, that's another one done so the next job really now is to grease that up and I've bought some high pressure grease, proper grease for taper roller bearings which I'm going to use to grease that bottom bearing up we'll assemble that into the outer race by putting this through the spindle by feeding it through and then we'll fit the top one in probably the same 
Mano, I don't know yet. We'll see how much room I've got to work. It's going to be a bit more difficult, that one, because I'm going to be working down the back end of the spindle. But we'll have a look, see what the right thing to do is, or what I think the right thing to do is. Um, and then uh, we'll get the this assembly, or this sort of sub-assembly, hopefully put back together. At that point, I'll feel a lot happier, because that's the important bearings then sealed in, out of harm's way, um, and that will be the spindle rebuilt. So I'll bring you back when we're greasing this up and assembling it together. Right guys, I'm ready to grease up the the bearing. I've just stuck that bit of paper over it. I've been out of the shop for a bit, so I'll just put that over there just to stop any any muck or any dust or anything getting on that bearing uh, before we assemble it. So this is what I bought, um, and this is it's an SKF product, um, and according to their website this is the right grease for this particular application where it's high pressure um, on a sort of taper roller bearing so I, I thought I'd just make sure I get in the right stuff I think it's all about the pressure you can see there it says high load and extreme pressure so that's what this grease is geared up for um, the, spin, the spindle speed my mill runs at it's 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 nowhere near these bearings are going to be going nowhere near as fast as they're capable of going so from a spindle speed perspective it's going to be very lightly used so what we'll do we'll just take that off and we'll put a coating of this grease on here It's quite firm, which is what I'd expect. So it stays put really once you've uh, once you've got it in place. So I'm just going to work my way around the around the outside for a start. Make sure that the rollers are properly coated. Makes sense if I was doing it where you could see what I was doing, I suppose, rather than around the back. I'm just rolling all of that round to make sure it's rolling right round into the inner the inner race on those rollers. There we go. Um, I'll just give the other end the same treatment on the bottom of the rollers. I'll just try and create a I don't know what I'm creating really, a mess by the looks of it. One thing is for sure, this will certainly be better for this bearing than all that paint and crap was for the last one that was in installed. So I think that's uh, I think that's acceptable. Feels nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do now is just up this shaft while I've got the, the remainder on my hands. I'm just going to give this a very light coating on the rest of the shaft just to hopefully avoid any corrosion taking place once it's assembled. Unfortunately where I live we live up at we're up about 300 meters above sea level um, and we live in a lot of hills and we often get um, we often get some changes of temperature fairly quickly and a lot of humidity there's a lot of cloud so I'm constantly fighting um, moisture in this garage um, so anything I can do to try and prevent corrosion I'm going to do I came out the other night and we got some real low cloud and we were we were in the clouds really 
and there'd been a temperature change from cold to warm fairly quickly and, and I looked at my lathe where I put the I've got oil on the bedways and everything and the whole lathe had turned milky white and there was so much moisture in here that it had gone underneath the oil lifted the oil off the bed and turned it sort of milky white into an emulsion and then the water was just sitting on the on the metal surfaces and I was I was out here literally as fast as I was wiping surfaces they were just flashing straight over with rust um, it's quite uh, quite depressing at times but it is what it is I um, have to just try and stay on top of it right that's that done so I'm happy with that the next job we're now going to do is grab hold of the spindle in here I might need to reposition the camera not sure we'll just drop that oh I've got a lump of metal in there haven't I let's get rid of that that a nip Let's see if you can see what I'm doing there probably not just bear with me I'll just shuffle the camera around a bit that should do I'm just going to give these inner races a final wipe I've only just literally just done them a few minutes ago so they should still be good happy with them so this is it we will slide this together that's the front one in place And now, this is where things are going to become probably a little bit more tricky. So we'll grease this one up before we put it on the shaft. I think that'll do. It's got a decent amount all over that. Just get a bit of paper and wipe the excess off. Mainly that bore, I don't want any, I don't really want anything in that bore. A, lot, a very, very light coating won't matter, but any more than that, and it will probably make the fit on the shaft tighter than it should be or needs to be. Right, I think that'll do. So we'll position that. Okay, so that's at the start of uh, that's at the start of engagement now. Is that top bearing? So if I stand it like that in the vise, I know that bottom bearing's flush underneath. Obviously there's no preload on it, but it's uh, it's flush on there. Let me just get some more paper.
So fortunately, this top race, I can get to, uh, I think I can get to this with a drift to get this on. So I think it's just a case now, I think, of uh, doing what I did before and just gently tapping this down into position. Hopefully. more scope in there yet I think. That's about snug there now. This is the uh, bottom of the spindle on the vice. I thought that sounded pretty rough. I'll not do that anymore until we move it. Now what I'm going to do is just give that a quick wipe on that top there just in case there's any little bits of brass that have come off that drift. I don't think there is but we'll just clean that up, that top surface. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll I'll just show you that. Hopefully you can see that hole in there now, all nicely bedded in. Feels very nice, completely different to uh, the old one that I took apart. Right, we're back guys. All I've done there is I've just took the nut and washer back off, put it back in the vise, just tap that bearing down a bit more. I've now got, there's no end float in there at all, so I've taken all the end floats out. There's some stick slip resistance in there, which is just the grease. It feels very nice. So, I'm now going to put this preload on. Um, what have I done with me? punch I was using here. So I'm going to go around one tap I think from where it is. Oh no, that's not very tight. Now it is. So which one is it? That one. Right guys, there we go. It obviously feels very smooth, which I'd expect. There's quite a bit of resistance but then there was that same amount of resistance when all I'd done was taken the uh, all the end float out before I'd applied any preload at all but there's certainly there's no end float in there at all and I can't feel any radial float which I shouldn't be able to 
think that is just stick slip because when you move it quickly you can feel it release and it gets it gets easy so yeah that's just stick slip from the grease it's the coefficient of friction that the grease is creating in the in the races I think I'm going to call that done for now um, we'll leave it at that I'll bring you back when I'm uh, when I'm doing something else